tonight we're doing a virtual ghost tour. We're at Mo'ilili Cemetery. And I'm about to uh, watch Joel talk about the place we're at. You want to go first? Uh, you do yours, then I'll, 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 I'll interject after. I will do mine for yours, too. Yeah, you do the uh, story of Miles. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay. Yeah, you got a good life. Look at that. You can see clearly. What you're looking at right now is the final resting place for Miles Fukunaga. And there's an incredible connection with the history of a terrible crime and tragedy with this place. So for those of you that are watching tonight, we will be talking about that. And, and we'll be talking about how it connects with the paranormal. Like between the headstones. Like people? Pe like I thought people were coming to us, but then the car came by and showed his headlights and there was nobody there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what I brought with me tonight as well, and it's over here. I do have the EM pump. This is a specialized piece of equipment that puts out a lot of energy into the air. This will be used at every location that we go to. <clears throat> so what I'm supposed to do is say that whoever's here tonight, if you want to speak and you need some kind of energy, touch this box and you'll be able to use it. Okay? To whoever is here tonight. Mahalo. Some of the articles that, that we've read, it's like he wasn't all there. And being of Japanese descent during this time period, that brought great shame on top of his attempted suicide just, what, a year or two years prior? He tried to take his own life, which brought a lot more shame. And now what had happened was in, in, the, in Chinatown, his parents were not able to pay rent, although Miles was working at the seaside hotel in the cafeteria or in the restaurant busting dishes, busting his vocale for about 80 hours a week, and he was bringing home scraps. They still weren't able to afford rent. They were $20 short, I think it was. And so the collector, the guy that was there to collect the rent, they begged for an extension. They begged for an extension, and what happened was, he, um, I will watch this over here. Hey, Caroline. And the collector dragged them outside and said, I'll give you an extension only if you beg for it. So they were outside in front of all their neighbors and they begged and pleaded for the money extended for the, you know, the extension to the loan, which brought more shame to the family of Miles. And Miles put a plan into action, being inspired by several other crimes in, around the country. And this, during the last few years, he planned to kidnap a little boy. The boy was a child of the man who owns the house, the business who owns the house, who owns the property. And so they blamed him for that because of the rent. You know, he blamed the <coughs> owner for that. And he one day he goes to the school of the son. The son's name was Gil Jameson. 
he goes to Punahou School and he poses as an orderly and he has a taxi cab and he goes to girls' class and he says, your mother has been in a horrible car accident and we need you to come and see your mother in the hospital. And so Gil was, how old was he, 10? I'm not sure. He was... Around 10, I think, yes. So, so Gil jumps into the car completely kind of, you know, freaked out and stuff. And Miles and Gil drive away. Gil takes him over to where the Alawai is now, right by his hotel in the bushes. He, some of the, the, the some of the details change depending on the accounts you read, but most of the accounts we have read has he came over, he beat him with a chisel. Yeah. He he he, he struck him with the chisel repeatedly, trying to kill the, the ten year old boy, but he wouldn't die. So he then started choking the boy, and the boy still wouldn't die. So he took a shovel to his face, started bashing the poor ten year old boy to death, and then he finally died. This is before the Alawai was built, probably during its construction. What had happened was he threw the body of Gil into the bushes, into the Keave bushes, and this urges him the more sinister nickname, the Keave Killer, is what he's known as. And his idea was to take a ransom out. His ransom was, what was it? Ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars. And, and five dollar bills. And yeah. Five dollar bills. Speculated. It was, it was speculated. He never really said that. He said why, but it's speculated that his plan was to get the ten thousand dollars, give it to his parents, and then turn himself in or to commit suicide, thus bringing the shame that he had brought into his parents' life. And he would try to make amends for it through this. He charged ten thousand he, he had a ten thousand um, dollar what's what i'm looking for ransom ransom leading people to believe he was still alive unfortunately the whole community rose up against him and this was a time during very pro white everything white was was good anything not white was bad everybody who wasn't white was seen as second class citizens kind of thing and so it, word got around that this Japanese boy, this Japanese guy, kidnapped a young white boy of rich parenthood, you know, with rich family, well to do all of white boy. And so, like, we're talking the entire community was out at nighttime looking for him. They walked from Waikiki to Aloha Tower and back looking for him. The sirens of downtown went off to let everybody know to find this boy. The Boy Scouts were, were walking around and looking this uh for either gill or for miles they had found miles in a restaurant he had gotten four thousand dollars and they found him with the trace bills right they gave him four thousand dollars and they traced the bills to him and they found him <coughs> and he didn't even resist they arrested him yeah his sister turned him in yeah okay my sister turned him in. Yeah. yeah they arrested him they tried they tried him in the later weeks days tried him and they sentenced him to be executed because of public opinion. I recall reading that the people, the jurors themselves were in tears. They did not want to condemn this guy to murder, to, to death, to execution. After, of course, they had found Gil. But that was the consensus, and so they did. Um, it's believed that, um, well, Gil, um, I'm sorry, Miles was taken over here to Moli League Cemetery. After, of course, he was executed, and he was buried here, and his headstone is in front of us, in front of here, but it doesn't say anything about Miles. What it says instead, the carvings on the stone, it says something about, the, what is it, the, you know, It's a karmic carving on the stone. Something along the lines of may he do better next time. Because it was said if they had put his name on the headstone, people were still outraged. They would have dug him up, they would have desecrated him, they would have graffitied the stone, they would have done all kinds of things to it. So they just left him at a fourth headstone or a headstone that was made like that. So yeah. If you look at all the other hakas that are here, they're all traditional Japanese uh, graves 
This is the only one in this cemetery that actually looks like this. Another thing about Miles was that before everything happened, he was converted to Catholicism, being a Catholic. And that's why another reason why the entire resting place looks different it has to do along those lines as well. So, thank you. Yeah. He yeah, became I'm not a Catholic. Close to you because you're handsome, but you are very handsome. Oh, thank so you. Okay, everybody can hear you. Too. Thank you. <laughs> I like you too. Let's go skip into the rain after. Um, yeah. They call it so sorry. Yeah. Um, we can crack jokes with Bob. Um, before we continue, let's go ahead and make a break and offer a prelate for a In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God, please protect us this night. Please protect myself. Please protect Obaki. Please protect our vehicle. Please protect our houses, our family, our loved ones. Please protect the people who are watching this video. Protect their devices, their families, enter their house and grant them your protection and your blessing. Um, Lord, I'd also like to offer a special prayer to Miles and to Gil. May they rest in peace. May they find the peace that only you can find. May they find forgiveness and may they move forward in this afterlife and move forward into the next or into your loving arms. Whatever their path says, whatever your will says, Lord. We ask this in the name of your most precious Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> what I like to add to everything is I have a connection with all of this because years ago, a very famous person asked me to come here to see if I could find out anything about the haunting that is involved with Miles Fukunaga and Gil Jameson. I won't go into the details because it is not my story to tell. But according to what people have said at around this time of the year, things were being left near his resting place. And that's all I'm going to say. So I was invited to go and look in this. I was given the honor to do so. So one night, me and my um, roommate, my ex-girlfriend, come down here and we turn on a, a digital recorder. And she senses that there's a presence in front of this resting place and that the person identifies themselves as Miles. During the course of the recording, we actually caught something along the lines of saying, no respect. And that was interesting because of course, the tragedy and everything else involved. Was this Miles trying to reach out and say, say that there was no respect as far as what was happening with the entire situation? I'm not too sure. So that was part one of us coming over here. The second part is we went down to the resting place of Gil Jameson one day. It was very interesting how everything played out. I was at home and I kept hearing his name, Gil, over and over again. So finally, we got into a car and we drove to his place where he's at rest. And when we got out of the car, we walked around the cemetery. We didn't know where um, Gil was. Obviously, you can see where Miles is. You can definitely see that. We didn't know anything about where Gil was. So we sat down and as we were sitting down, we were looking in front of us and then there's this huge tree and this branch breaks off from the tree and hits the ground with a powerful, loud sound. And all the birds start flying in the air. So I got chicken skin and I walked over to where the, the tree had fallen, the branch had fallen. And there in front of me was Gil Jameson's resting place. So we went over there and she talked to Gil and I was doing a recording. And as she's talking to Gil, Gil is saying, I forgive him. I forgive him. You know, I, I just want him to know that he is forgiven. And as my friend is talking to Gil Jameson, she tells him, okay, and you know, we'll take care of this. And if you like, you can go now. And then in the course of the recording, you could hear someone say goodbye. Here's the weird thing. We looked around for that tree branch. There was nothing there. There was no tree branch at all. And that was a very interesting thing because in all the years that I've done this, that's the only time that something so huge and powerful happened, but there was no sign afterwards. It's like we were led to go there. We were led to talk to Gil about the, the crime. And afterwards, I came back to here one night by myself and I talked to Gil. But before I went into the cemetery, 
<clears throat> I could hear someone walking around right over here, back and forth, back and forth. Came in here, I spoke to Miles, made peace with the situation, and hopefully it bought some kind of pono to this terrible, terrible story. People say that he's still here, and I believe that. There's different reasons probably why he's still here. Maybe Gil did not reach out and come to Mo'ili'ili and stood here and talked to Miles. But I hope one day that that will happen. And this is my connection with this particular location. I don't have much of a connection to this, otherwise it's better than telling stories. Robert's the first guy that came here, Robert uh, Sepulveda. He suggested coming here on the floor. And this place just has a lot of strange uh, energy. I mean, I, I, it's light. It's lit up. It's in the middle of a residential area. It's not, it's not scary. It's just... I have an Ivan story. So <clears throat> Ivan and I used to love to come over here and just quietly walk around and take photos. Well, one night while we were here, we kind of like, if you can see where I'm pointing, there's like a row of headstones. We can walk back here where the headstones are. And we were walking down in this direction and Ivan was next to me. And then all of a sudden, from out of nowhere, there was this voice that said, hey. And both Ivan and myself kind of like froze and we looked around and there was nobody there. And out of the, it's really interesting about ghosts. You can go here a hundred times and nothing will happen. And then one night you come into here and you'll have an experience. It might be brief. It could be profound. But I kind of wonder, because this was after I spoke with, with Miles. I'm not saying it was him. Was this Miles trying to reach out? Ivan really, really loved that moment. And I know that we spoke about it several times. So that's my story with Ivan and Mo'ili'ili Cemetery as well. Ivan, for such a quiet guy, he loved getting scared. <laughs> oh, yes, he did. And it, he, he wouldn't even like, he wouldn't get scared. He'd just jump and he'd be like, oh, that was cool. <laughs> yeah, if Ivan jumps, you're like, ah, that's, that's something happening. Something's <laughs> I, going on. I recall Jim Trail on the old Tully Road where we were at Kaniaka Pupo. He, he's just watching the car in the pitch black, smoking a cigarette in the pitch black, can't see anything, and then a dude on a bike comes running up there. <laughs> Ooh, what was that? It sounded like a cat. Yeah, it's a cat. I saw a cat earlier, though. I saw a cat over there. I did want to share one story, then we'll go ahead and begin an investigation and see if there's anyone that will talk to us. Um, this is a story that was that happened here, shared by the different guy. Yes, the thing about Guy, it's good fun because I, I knew I took him here one night and he's like, oh, this place. Oh, I got a story about this place, you know. And he was like, yeah, there's a place over here. He's like, there's a certain spot at a certain grave where um, this story happened, you know. But then I take him to another place and he's like, oh, I know a story over here too, you know, like personal experiences everywhere. They said, uh, high school. It's cool time. Him and his friends, potty, potty, potty. They lived around the area here, a couple miles away, you know, all in different directions. So they would, they come over here after school. They come over here nighttime, and they would drink beer. Yeah. So he's like, yeah, so we went to Moyalili Cemetery. One of my friends, he was like, always into the ghost stuff. And so he, he, uh, he told us, you know, go sit by this head stone, and go sit by the stone. And then uh, a little while into it, he starts doing this uh, this weird Japanese chant, walks around the headstone a few times, you know, and then sits back down like he's waiting. And we wait a little while, drink some more beer, and nothing happens. So he's like, ah, lose money. And then uh, getting late already, about 2 o'clock in the morning or so, and so it's like, okay, it's time to go. And so everybody walks home, they all go in their different directions, you know guy is walking on by himself right and no big deal right this is like the what 70s 60s maybe mm -hmm. 70s so guys walking down 
I think was King Street. And he, as he was walking down King Street, real quiet, no problem, right? Middle of the night, nobody up. And then all of a sudden, he hears cats. He hears cats mewing. Just cats going, you know, just not just like meowing, okay, but like mewing. His weird noises. And he's kind of getting a little bit like, what's going on? And then he continues walking and he gets bought a block. And Cats come out of the alley. These cats come out everywhere and they start following him with this big thing again and again. And they just keep there's the crowd gets bigger and bigger until he has a whole bunch of cats behind him now and he's getting a little bit like he crosses the street to get away from the cats right by a fence and right by a big like um like a bush, right? And as he gets by the fence, something runs up against the the little like bush and the fence and hits it. And he thinks it's a dog because it's big. And then he starts to hear the mewling coming from the other side of the fence. He looks and there's a, cat, a huge cat. You can just see the feet, just see the body. It's a huge cat right underneath the little bush, following him, mewling as well. And he starts to like run a little bit more, a little bit faster. And then he hears a loud thud. The cat had jumped over the fence landed right on the floor and he looks at the cat and the cat looks at him the cat has a face of a of a woman i think it was the cat has a woman's face looking back at him like a full-on person's face on a cat's body mewling and then it starts charging him and he books it he runs as fast as he can all these cats until and he, they keep going he keeps running till he gets home and he lived on the second floor so he gets to the bottom and he starts running up the stairs and he grabs onto the rail and he said if he never grabbed onto the rail he would have been pulled back because the cat launched itself landed on his back right as he got to the top step he threw open the door slammed the door shut and the cat was gone and he stayed up till the sun came up he was freaking out of course i would be too next day he goes to school and he tells his friend what happened and the friend that did the little chant and walked around the headstone was like really that happened to you he's like yeah what the heck you know like and the friend's like well that's what i did i did the uh, i did a thing to summon the obake neko the japanese ghost cat i guess it worked out for that that was the story that guy showed me and i brought him into the grave the grave over here he was looking for the headstone he couldn't find it and i'm like well let me bring you to a headstone that i know about let me tell you the story get here and his jaw drops with a joke. This is the headstone where it happened. This is where all of that stuff happened. We were just sitting right over here, drinking right on the stuff, and yeah. <laughs> so yeah, interesting story. I thought you guys would enjoy that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the, the really wonderful thing about this, and I was talking to Joe about it earlier, the great thing about being here, the great thing about doing this for the very first stop in this virtual ghost tour is to pay homage to Glenn Grant because this is Glenn Grant land. We're in Mo'ili'ili. It doesn't get much better than this. And this is why, you know, some of these stories, I don't share everything because it's either Glenn's or I can say it now, it's Lopaka's. And, but, you know, to pay homage to great storytellers like him, and I'm gonna add this right now also, um, being here with a great storyteller like Joe Punohu, guys. Yeah. Yeah, to, to, share, to share that. But yeah, you know, Glenn did a lot for us, and I'm glad that we can, you know, do something like this for him as well. So I just wanted to throw that in there. Yeah. yeah. Did he have a shop or the haunt? Yeah, the haunt, yes. He did. Mo'ili'ili. Ka Mo'ili'ili. The lizard's tail. Like that. I don't know what Ili'ili means, but it was like the ending part of the lizard's tail. He actually had a lizard's tail. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Mm -hmm. Also, notably, not here exactly, but nearby. Again, we're talking about Glen Grant country is the famous and the very spooky Contessa apartment buildings. And that's another place that has a lot of uh, mana to it. I wonder where it is. is that, that's not the Contessa over there. Yes, that is that huh? right there. That is it. That's it right there. That's a place of legend, guys. I, I once joked about it. I said, I can imagine that they must be giving pretty uh, cheap rent to live in that building. There's so many stories you about it. Joke? was driving by one night? Yes. was driving by one night. And, uh, like, middle of the night, they get like six, seven people outside smoking. And it's like, I said, I wonder if these guys know how haunted they're building. <laughs> yeah. And then maybe that's why they're outside. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you said, yeah, that's probably why they also <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So right there, guys, if I'm not mistaken, that's the Contessa. Yes, Bernard, that's the one with the Mohawk with the school. You like visit that's there. Yeah. Oh, someone okay. someone wants to visit there. No, 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 no. You, you really don't. Um, and we just, again, you know, we approach this with very much so, as much respect as possible. And what we're about to do, <clears throat> which I don't think has ever been done, but I want to say in the beginning... In case anyone wants to leave comments or have ideas in their heads. Because we're able to communicate with Miles, we're going to do a brief spirit box over here. Yeah, please do. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. Fast, though, the, um, the Contessa was a graveyard in a church. And when they built the Contessa in the basement, they found how many bones? How many bones? <clears throat> the one, there was one that was very famous in a Glenn Grant story. There was a very large skeleton of a Hawaiian man, I believe, with like long hair. I think maybe red hair. But instead of removing him, this is what I heard told to me. They left his remains there. Oh, yeah. And that caused a lot of pilakia, a lot of problems. Yeah. Yes, yes, they've been relocated to Kauai Hau, is it? Kauai Hau, yes. No, no, no. Not Kauai Hau? was relocated to Kauai Hau. From here, huh? The bell from the church. Oh, the bell was. Okay, yeah. I don't know. As well, maybe they were reinterred somewhere else. Could be Kauai Hau, too. Maybe there's a little problem. That's where, the, that's where it was, right? The Contessa. The church. It was right where the Contessa is. Yes. And they took the bell from the church and put it in Kauai Hau Cemetery. And that's the one that's haunted by the dog or something, right? Yeah. The bell or something at that time. Yeah. Carolyn says, Obaki, I've been on every single Glen Grant tour. And I tell you without a doubt, you remind me a lot of him. You are an incredible storyteller. You've mastered the dramatics and theatrics of ghost storytelling. I'm sure Glenn is so honored to have both you and Joe celebrating his legacy. Mahalo, Carolyn. Mahalo, who said that? Carolyn. Thank you, Carolyn. I appreciate that. Really, Mahalo. Love Carolyn. <laughs> love Carolyn. Not only know her, I love her. She's a great singer, by the way. <clears throat> yeah, she is. Very good singer. Yes, we do. So again, it's chicken skin a little bit here, but not bad chicken skin. Yeah, yeah, Joe. It's it's good chicken skin kind. Yeah, very good chicken skin over here. Let's see what's over here. Down here, there's some things down here. What was your plan for the investigation? Spirit box. Spirit box. Just you know what? It's a it's kind of like a way to go full circle. You know, because I know he was trying to communicate. And what I would like to ask uh, Miles is a respectful communication back and forth. It won't be long. And uh, one of the things I want to ask you and for Joe to use the spirit box is, what did you mean by no respect? I think what you have to say is as important now as it was back when you were here with us. So much respect given to you when we ask this. And then we will, of course, be Pona with you and we'll go on our way and... Um, we're Catholic as well, and we'll pray for you. We want you to find peace, Miles. And that's it, basically. I'd like to ask also the spirits in the area. Sure. Um, for permission to use this. This is a device, if the spirits around here do not know. This is a device where people who have, where spirits and energy can, who have not passed, can communicate with us. And if there's any way that we can help them, they let us know. Yeah. And we can speak with them and we can pray for them and we can help them rest. Yeah, and then Miles, <coughs> I'm sorry, Joe. And then Miles, we will um, ask questions that has nothing to do with you. Joe, 
I want to ask about that cat, if you don't mind. What the story cat? that guy talked oh. about. Sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we'll talk about the cat, too. <laughs> Turn it on as loud as you can. And then go for AM. I can do it. As loud as you can. I don't know if I want to lie this loud, dude. I'm going to turn up the papers. Let's see. You can turn it up. You can turn it up. So, that's them, right? Yeah, hit mode again. The M. One time. Find it. No. Yeah, I'll fix this. Oh. Yeah, well, you keep going into... Play a little bit louder so everybody can hear okay <clears throat> so the, our purpose of doing the spirit box tonight is to come to have first and foremost miles most is miles if you are here still please uh feel free to communicate through this device if there's any spirits in the area that know where he is and he is not at rest yet and he has something to say to so you, please help him come through. Um, any spirit that is not him, do not come through. So we would like to speak with Miles. Could you start by saying your name? Press it once. Stop. I didn't press it. I know. Sorry, one more time. Could you please say your name if you're here? You heard that? Then that Asire or something? Yeah, it was. <clears throat> Miles, if you're here, hold on. I want you to come over here. I'll hold it actually. You can take energy from this if you're having a hard time speaking and you can use that. I thought I heard Grant. He's here, but he's very shy. Okay. Then I'm gonna Miles. Have you crossed over? Miles, how are you feeling right now? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Miles, how are you feeling? Are you sad? Are you saying thank you because of this? No. Oh. Spirits. Okay, go ahead. Of course. Please pardon this. I don't need disrespect. I don't mean any disrespect. I heard something like that's not Pono. Huh? I heard something like that's not Pono, but I'm not sure. Is this okay? Yeah. Uh -huh. 
Miles, <clears throat> I remember when we were here, you said something about no respect. Or, can you tell me what that means? Okay, let's go in the car. I feel like we're making Okay. Hold on, guys. Yeah, let's just do it in here. Yes, no wind in here. Okay, guys, you still with us? Okay, good. Okay. Uh, turn it back on. Are you turned it off? Uh, oh, no problem. Miles, you can talk to us, Miles. If you have anything to say, you can tell us. Miles, let me set this up for you, and then you can hold it. Is it sort of... Uh, no, I'll just make sure. Up, huh? I'm, I'm going to just... I think I know the sweet spot. Okay. Okay, so I'll turn this on. Hold on, guys. We're restarting Spirit Box. Scanning AM. Let me put it up a little bit more. Try that. Miles, we were asking about <clears throat> when I was here years ago, when you said something about no respect, can you tell us what that means, sir? I asked respectfully. Release? Did you say release? Yeah, Aloha confirmed release. Like yeah. What kind of release are you talking about, Miles? Did you say not good? Release from your resting place? Yes. Whoa, okay. Go ahead, Joe. I just wanted to ask those questions. Miles? Miles, is somebody keeping you here? Can you tell me something about what happened? Uncle Ruben, you're right. He is hiding. He's not hiding from us. He's hiding from everything. Force or forced? Are you sure? Did you do this, Miles? Were you the one that did this, or did, did something else do this? Demon. Demon. I heard, I heard yes when you said demon. Very briefly. Were you influenced? Someone said yes. I hear a lot of yeses. If you're possessed, say that. 
Did you say possessed? Miles, did you get a chance to talk to Gil? Did Gil come over here and talk to you? He said that he forgives you. Do you believe that? I want to talk okay, go ahead. Turn the volume down for a second. Go ahead, go ahead. Um, I'd like to pray right now, Michael the Archangel, for you to come down here and clear the area of anything bad, clear the area of anything that is bad or evil, or anything that does not serve the greater good. Um, so come over here and grant your light around here to sh to get away all the shadows. Surround surround the spirit of um, Miles if he is still here and show him the truth and show him not to be afraid. Um, if it is your will, I mean, if it is your will, God, let him speak with us and see how we can best help him. Um, yes. Um, <laughs> I'm seeing right now a possibility that he's trapped by a whole lot of stuff in, in, in his guilt, um, other stuff, and he's confused, and there are things that don't want him to rest in peace. What moved the car just now? I don't know. So I want, just for this time at least, for the air to be clear and for all the lies to be gone, for the veil to be pulled up so everything can be seen for what it is so that if miles is still here he could see everything for what it is give him clarity for this moment at least grant him clarity and let him make the decision on his own we're going to go ahead and turn the spirit box volume back up again and we're just going to listen instead of asking questions what the hell did you see that what, what did you see Six six six, on the thing on the oh geez. I saw six 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 appear on this thing. Let it let it scan. Let me see if it shows up again. Is that a thing on AM radio? Uh, I really don't think so. It starts at eight hundred, right? Something like that. I had never seen six six six. Six six six. It's almost right, like it's almost like challenging, but okay. You know what it was? It was a combination of that and this at the same time. You know what that is next? It actually said something like, do you know what that is next? I heard that. Let's just listen. Well, the car moved again. Hey, look, look, look. It did. It does go down. Did it go to 666? Yes, it did. Yes, it did. So it wasn't a... Yeah. Why did I even notice that? Peekaboo. <laughs> I heard that. Did you hear that? That was peekaboo. Peekaboo? No. No peekaboo. Is that laughing? Yeah. Are you a Kolohi spirit? No, I don't like that. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, it said peekaboo. Peek it said that before too when we did a spirit box. This peekaboo gives you chicken skin. Yeah. That's bad. Michael the Archangel defend us in battle. We are protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And we vow will come to the heavenly host by the power of God, bless in the hell, Satan, and all evil spirits who crawl around the world seeking the name of Amen. Amen. Deliver us from all evil. <laughs> empowering. Is it empowering? Yes, empowering. Empowering. Is that a spirit that said that? Or was it the radio? It was, Perry, it was Larry Price. It was Larry Price. <laughs> There's something here. Someone. Who's here with us right now? Mm -hmm. 
Can angels be heard on a spirit box? Good question. I think if it serves a greater good, it's possible. Okay. Miles, is there any, hold on. Miles, is there anything that can be done to help you feel at peace? Where's Miles right now? Nervous. Where is Miles keeping out of it? That was a that was something. Miles, are you at peace? I saw six six six. What is that? What was that? That's a hiss. There was a hiss in this car. I made a noise. I said, well, but that's not an F. No, it was a hiss yeah. in the back seat. Time to end this? Yeah, I'm going to start a new one. I'm going to end this, this one right now. I want to ask about the cat. I want to ask the cat doing it. That was a hiss. That was a hiss in the back of the car. <clears throat> okay, Miles. Yeah. I hope you're at. I hope you're at peace. We're gonna leave in just a little bit. Before we leave, Joe shared a story about a cat involved with this cemetery. Is that you that just hiss? It sounded like a cat hissing in the back of this car. Is that you? That's you, say meow. Oh, you heard meow? I said, if that's you, say meow. Oh, did you hear it coming out of the box? Yeah, right when you turned it on, it said meow. Holy cow. That was legit real, guys. I heard a cat hissing. I heard it again. Son of a gun. Well, I'd rather not pay any attention right now, brother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if that's you, I definitely heard hissing the first time. Then, uh, I got my protections up yeah. in the back seat. We're in the back of the trunk. Yeah, we don't want any problems at all. We leave here peacefully. <clears throat> uh, by the way, before we go, we're gonna just see this. We're gonna keep it live, bro. Yeah. You get your charger. I, I, my, I, my phone is good for many hours. Oh, okay. Well, my, mine is going down. Okay. Fully charged. I'm gonna plug my phone in and take you guys along for the ride. But let's end. Let's wind up the site first. What's your, what's your words? Uh. I asked the people in the audience on Hawaiian Hauntings, as well as here in Ghosts of Hawaii, to join me in prayer for the tragedy that happened between Miles and not only Gil Jameson, but how it affected the island of Hawaii. <clears throat> so again, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God, we call upon your mercy, we call upon your love, and we call upon your peace to come upon the resting places of both Miles Fukunaga and Gil Jameson, Asking that if there is anything left that is unfinished, to let it be finished in your name. For peace and for love and for Pono to be fully restored between the two and also overall. Miles, you've been through a lot. I know it's not easy. And I know that Gil 
spoke to us and said, be at peace. So that is what we hope that you find. May there be an angel here to help you into the light. In Jesus' most holy name we ask, for the sake of Miles and Gil Jameson, amen. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Okay, guys, and with that said, <clears throat> this is only part one. Part two is going to happen shortly. I'll come back on live. I'm going to stay live. And then we're going to we're going to do the second part of tonight's ghost tour. So keep your eyes on YouTube, and we'll be back shortly. Part two of tonight's virtual ghost tour. Until then, guys, thank you for checking it out. Ghosts of Hawaii, your home for a dose of ghosts, and also prayer for those that need it. Aloha. Um, yeah.